My name is Bennett, and this is the Living My Alaska YouTube channel. And on this episode, we're working with this camper van. It is springtime here in South Central Alaska, and wow, I'm excited. It's been a long, very cold winter. I know we still have snow on the ground, and yes, we have four feet of snow in the backyard, but this is April, and that means melt is coming soon. We're prepping this van for springtime adventures, and on this episode, we have some problems. This thing rides really rough. It shakes back and forth when you hit bumps, throws things out of the cabinets. Rough ride means less fun. So in this episode of Living My Alaska, I'm going to show you some of the changes we're making to the suspension, the tires, the rear suspension, the shocks, and much more. I can't wait to get started. And I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go. So I've laid this old carpet here. Actually, it's a rug that was in our guest cabin and my wife didn't like it so it's quite it's almost new but i've laid it under here to insulate me and i have a limited amount of time out here before i'm going to get too cold to do this so i better shut up and start doing this the instructions say remove these and remove this same for the other side and then this sway bar comes off get my exercise today so i'm not going to take all these off just yet i want to pull this off here oh it's tight what she said oh there we go my apologies for the huffing and puffing it's probably not the most attractive thing to hear so i cannot get my impact wrench in there because our generator is sitting right here so i have to do this the old-fashioned way i'm gonna loosen up this so why is this important if we're just driving down a normal highway and we are in alaska if you want to drive down the highways of arizona and florida you don't necessarily need all this fancy suspension upgrades. Our problem is we live in Alaska and we go down dirt roads a lot and even the paved roads are brutal, rough. That's not to slight or talk bad about the state of Alaska. They do their best in some unbelievably difficult conditions. We don't want this very nice, very expensive camper van to rattle itself to death. So we're upgrading the suspension to give us the smoothest ride possible over very unfavorable conditions. We're gonna take off these two large bolts now and get this loose. And then we'll do the same for the other side. Impact wrench makes quick work. So now we got to go to the other side. So hang with me for a second. All right, let's see if we can break these loose. All right, again, it's a leverage thing because of my limited access. Keep your fingers crossed. So the plan now is to pull these bolts, pull these off, and then this break, this bar will come out. At least I hope it comes out. Whoa. There's that. Looks like both sides are off. I gotta go pull off the other side one of these. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna take off this bolt here, and then that'll be the last bolt to remove this sway bar. Okay, she's off. So our next step is to pull these off. All right, this is the old sway bar. This is the new sway bar. And in theory, it's thicker and heavier, and stiffer, which will prevent some of the rocking that we're getting. We've got to remove these metal brackets and then these bushings go on here and then these metal brackets go over those bushings. Yeah, here we go. That's probably not the way you want to use a wrench, folks. We do it, we must in Alaska. So I don't need this anymore. The only piece I need off of this one is this bracket. So the instructions tell us, that we never read, the instructions tell us to use this lubricant on the inside of these bushings. So if we are successful at this today, I'll take you guys for a ride in this beautiful Sprinter van and we'll test out what we've done if it made any difference at all. So the next step is to put these on here, open up like that. And they're cold right now, and so they're stiffer than they should be, but I think we can get them on there pretty easily. Okay. That looks good. So these sit over these bushings and hold the bar in place. Okay, so now we gotta do the fun part of crawling back under there and putting this back together. I sure hope it goes back together. Okay, here we are back under the van and we will attempt to get this very heavy bar back in place without damaging anything or damaging me. Wish me luck. Wow, that thing's heavy. I'm not sure how. I'm gonna do this by myself because it's so heavy. Okay, so what we've done is we've got this bolt back in this hole, and I believe it, this bar goes on the outside. I'll have to go around and check the other one. We're gonna get this bolt in here. This is for the shackle, and it looks like it's gonna thread through it. The instructions are to put thread locker here. The next step is to pivot this bar up. As you can see, these two bolts and this holder for these bushings goes in like that. The challenge I'm gonna have is pivoting this in place because it's darn heavy. Okay. One more time. If I can get just one bolt started, then I can put the thread locker in on the other. Yeah, there we go. 
so I'm thankful it's going together with relative success at this point. I think we have it in place. That was a beautiful sight, ladies and gentlemen. So we will go do the other side, and then we'll come back and tighten all this up and torque it down. Okay, let's try the other side. Okay, so we're crawling back in here again. Our goal is to get this bushing in place. Uh-oh, now we have an issue. I cannot get this into place. That might help for us put this one in place and then we'll put this back in. All right, I have a problem here because this isn't lining up. Oh, it's the wrong bolt maybe. Okay, lesson here. Two different size bolts. Shorter bolt goes here, longer bolt goes back there. I think I've gotten lucky and threads are started. I have a feeling the suspension is uneven right now and so it's causing this thing to flex. And we're having this issue. All right, so I'll go pull that other one off. We are done with installing the Hellwig anti-sway bar. And I wanted to give you just a summary of the basic tools that I needed to do this job that made life a lot easier for me. 18 millimeter wrenches, sockets of different sizes with on some ratchets. The breaker bar with an 18 millimeter to get these bolts here were quite tough to get out. The breaker bar helped. And then this electric impact wrench really helped to speed things along. But that's it, that's all we needed, folks. So one more time, I'm gonna give you a summary. Three basic improvements. That is the Hellwig sway bar. We've put an adjustable set of rear shocks made by Falcon on this thing and we've put an extra leaf spring so this is the extra leaf spring where it bolts on from super springs and you can adjust the tension on this so we have it adjusted about as tight as we can get it to get as much lift as possible and support we couldn't really get to the tightest setting so we put it here and i still think that's too much tension we have these in the in the rear and in the front so we're going to take this down to here but first we have to reduce the tension on here so we can pull this bolt out so that's where this u-bolt comes in oh it's tight under here I just ate too much lunch, so I can barely breathe. So there's a tremendous amount of tension on this spring. So you wanna be very careful. I have this board, it's two by four, that's gonna take up a little bit of space so I don't have to wrench so much. All right, let's give it a shot. So excuse some of the noise here. I know the tension is off of it because now I can move this a little bit. All right, worst part's over, folks. We're gonna put this back on. This is a Teflon nut and they say don't torque it down too much, but I'm still going to put red Loctite. Red Loctite is the, um, I believe it's the strongest of the Loctites. The next step is to put this bolt back in. So our final step is to remove this. Oh, all right, there's one. So I'm hoping now most of the tension is back on this and I can back that one off. I'm gonna work on this after we do this and we'll do the other side and then we'll go for a ride. So I'll be right back after I take some Advil painkillers and get this done. <laughs> See you soon. Okay, we survived from doing that work under the van. What I wanna know is whether me taking some of the tension off of those leaf springs drops the rear of my van because I don't want that. So nothing's changed there. It's still 19 and 1 fourth. So we've taken some of the tension off, which is going to soft, soften up the suspension with no loss of lift to the back of the van. So that's fantastic. We have about, I don't know, about 60% of the lift of the tension off of those springs because the rear setting on the super spring is all the way soft. And on the front, it's at the middle. What we're going to do is soften up adjust the adjustable shocks just a bit. I'll show you how to adjust these shocks and what we're doing. Okay folks, so what we're doing at, what we're looking at right here is the adjustment settings on the Falcon rear van. Setting one, two, and three on the gross setting and then settings one through eight on the fine adjustment in the number two of the three, you can adjust this. And I believe I have it almost all the way turned up. I've got it on six or eight. So I'm gonna bring that down to five. Actually, I'm gonna to go to four. So we're adjusting the fine adjustment on these shocks to make it a little bit softer back here. Hey guys, so here's what we're doing. We're gonna test out this van after the changes we've made. We've made several suspension changes to the back of our 2023 Coachman Galleria 24FL. Mercedes-Benz 3500 chassis dually, four x four. That's a lot, it's a lot to say, isn't it? <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we've adjusted everything. We're gonna put this GoPro under this van. We're gonna go for a ride. Come on, let's go. I'll show you where I put this. We'll figure out where to put it and we'll jump inside and I'll take you for a ride down George Parks Highway in beautiful central Alaska on the way to Denali National Park. Okay, everyone, now that I'm thoroughly soaked and wet and cold, my backside soaked and wet from crawling under this van, I've set up a spare GoPro I have to record the suspension flex and activity as we go down the highway. Thanks for being patient. 
prescription eyeglasses. These are not just so they can so I can look cool or because it's bright and sunny outside. These are prescription. I am blind in one eye, and by law I'm required to wear these when I drive. It says on my driver's license that guy's half blind. He has to wear eyeglasses. <laughs> it's not what it says, but you get the point. So my hope is is we gather and get the inside of this thing and how it rocks and rattles, and hopefully less rock and rattle. Okay release the parking brake. We are in four-wheel drive. May or may not need it once we get out of the driveway. Not much rocking. I'm hitting potholes. Oh, that was a good pothole. A little bit of rattle back there, but not much in the way of sharp bumps at all. Okay, so we've got three different elements. Is the Helwig sway bar set up correctly? If we've reduced the sway, lateral back and forth horizontal movement, then yes. Are we bouncing or are we not? If we're not bouncing as much, then we've got the shocks set up correctly. And then the last question is, how does it ride over small bumps? Have we reduced the sharpness that I've felt over the small bumps? And if the answer to that is yes, then we've got the super springs set up correctly. So now we're on the highway, speed limit 65 miles an hour, it's two lanes, one lane each way. And as you can see, it's much, much smoother, of course. We're gonna hit lots of um, expansion gaps in this highway. And there are a few curves here that we're gonna take at 60 miles an hour to see what happens. And I'm hitting a few expansion gaps already and I don't feel anything at all, which is really great. If that's the case, folks, I'm thrilled because I've been frustrated with this for quite a while trying to fine tune this machine to ride better. We're doing 63 miles an hour at the moment and I'm crossing expansion gaps in the pavement, which leaves a little bump about every 10 or 15 seconds and I don't even feel them. Before, when we had the extra tension, you could feel those and you could hear the bang inside the van. Every time I get in this van, I grin because we have so many wonderful memories traveling in this van. We bought this van in Pensacola, Florida, and the nice folks at Sunshine State RV, Nick, the owner there, sent me this van free of charge, meaning shipping. He didn't charge me to ship it from Tallahassee, Florida, I believe it was Tallahassee, to Pensacola, which is quite a drive. I want to say about a five-hour trip for the gentleman who drove it over to us and dropped it off to us at a campground in Pensacola. And then we got in the van and drove that the van from Pensacola, Florida, down Interstate 10, all the way to California. And then we headed north through Northern California, through Oregon, and to Seattle, Washington, where we put this van on a shipping barge to Alaska. And that's how we got it to Alaska. And it was a fantastic trip. We did that over a Christmas, New Year's break. We stopped and visited with family in Mississippi and Louisiana. We stopped and visited the hill country, the beautiful hill country of uh, South Central Texas. Went through the deserts of Arizona. Beautiful time of year in December to visit those deserts because it's cool outside and brilliantly sunny and gorgeous. We stopped in Las Vegas for a few nights because my wife had never been to Las Vegas. So we spent New Year's, celebrated New Year's in Las Vegas. So we're cruising at 55 miles an hour and I am amazed at how very well this thing is driving at the moment. Extremely smooth. I can crank the wheel over here and there and I feel it rock just a little bit, but not much. But as of right now, the sharp bump sensitivity is absolutely gone. And I'm extremely pleased about that because that was our biggest problem. We drove this van all winter on occasion. I tested it down to negative 30. And I have to say that I had problems getting this thing started at negative 30. And that's normal. I think just about any diesel engine in a negative 30 environment would give you a hard time. I, my concern was that the DEF, the DEF fluid, which is required for this vehicle, was frozen, and the diesel was starting to gel. We use a additive in the diesel fuel tank 
to keep that diesel from thickening up into a gel when it's very, very cold like that. Otherwise, the van performed very well. We drove it in you know, very snowy roads, four-wheel drive, the Falcon Wild Peak snow winter rated tires did pretty well. Not as good as a studded tire, but good enough. But this van is so heavy, heavy, and we've got so much weight on the back end of this thing, traction was not an issue. I definitely want to make some changes for next winter. I want studded tires. We're cruising at 60 miles an hour down the beautiful George Parks Highway in South Central Alaska. To give you an idea of where we are at the moment, we are about three hours south of Denali Natural Park, about two hours north of Anchorage, nearest to the town of, um, I think, Willow. We can hit the rumble strip and see how that does. Huh, not even so bad on the rumble strip. So we're going over a bridge now, and there are expansion joints. And I am not hearing much noise. And I'm very, very thankful for that. So the Falcon Wild Peak tires have been, been pretty good. We bought these at Discount Tire in um, Pensacola, Florida from my good friend and fellow Catholic Christian man, Mr. Bruce Haley. Bruce, if you're listening, God bless you, sir. Hope you're doing well. The thing we want this van for is for travel places like Alaska. We wanted to go into national parks and state parks. We wanted something small enough to do that. We want to hit the gravel roads and the dirt roads that expand throughout Alaska and beyond. And so that is why I'm obsessing about getting the smoothest ride I can out of this thing. It's not for the highway. This van from the factory rode great on the highway. That's not for everything rides great on the highway. But it's when you hit Alaskan roads and gravel roads that we hope to have a better ride. And I think we're getting there because on this trip, I see virtually no evidence of hitting the expansion joints in the road, and I don't feel any sway. So I think after many, many months of research and trying and, and talking to people, I think we finally found a really good solution. So we're braking pretty hard here. There's not much rocking. Ooh, more potholes. Let's hit them. Bump. Oh. Hey, very good. I felt that suspension flex and no rocking. Yay, guys! I think we've done it. <laughs> I think we finally solved it. I think it's been almost a year since I've been obsessing about this suspension on this fan. I am extremely pleased. Thank you so much for watching as we hunt, we harvest, we homestead, and we adventure our way through the last frontier. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos because we have so much more to share with you as we show you what it means when we say we are living by Alaska. See you next time.